Okay, um, I'm sorry about the clutter on the desk, but um, I don't have much space to work in. Uh, first, I want to point out this is bad guy number one, bad guy number two, three, and four. Um, 64,000 microfarad, 20 uh, volts DC. Do not touch. Take off fingers. They're, they've been discharged, but you don't want to use those yet in this circuit. Um, so they're, they're really deadly. All right, basically what we've got here, um, this is my MMC, and it's kind of small because that's all the capacitors I had at the moment. Um, these are 1,000 microfarad at 50 volts. And there's one, two, three, four, five of those um, at three depth. So that's 15,000 microfarads running in parallel. Um, this would be the positive side and negative side. And these are all going to be hooked together to give you a, a parallel charge discharge. And that's basically out of a Tesla coil uh, configuration. This is just a binding post. Um, what I'm using here is a 12 volt. A lawnmower battery. Um, it's cheap, saves on space, and delivers enough amperage to drive the circuit for now. Um, here we've got two ignition coils, uh, coil one, coil two. These are hooked up. This is positive on coil one. This is negative down here. And uh, there's a small jumper here. Positive is negative. It's positive from coil two goes to negative on coil one and then that is connected back to the battery. Okay. Um, center electrode of coil one goes to positive of the plug. Um, that's right there. And then I've made out of a copper housing wire just for a ground. Um, that goes into coil two. All right. So it's a, it's a combined output circuit. In other words, the mm -hmm. positive from this and this alternate back and forth and that's determined by the circuit. Alright, down here, this is a diode stack and what this diode stack is for is uh, for blocking high voltage. Now this one's only built for 20 kilovolts. It would have to be bigger if you wanted to block this circuit. This is running between 40 and 60 kilovolts. I haven't built a shunt to measure it, but it's pretty close. I wouldn't recommend touching that. Um, but what we're using now is this circuit is a 555 timer, a couple 1K resistors, hooked up to two 10K pots. That's for you know the timing and the width. That's going to a 2N uh, 3055 NPN transistor. Heat sinked. Uh, that is coming off to coil one positive, and is driving the whole circuit. This basically is a dead man switch. I wouldn't recommend running a circuit without one in case something happens to you, you might trip, fall, whatever. But um, if you touch that, um, I've already done it once and I, I don't plan on doing it again, it will knock you on your butt. Okay, so let's get a little demonstration here. Dead man switch and fire. Now I've already used, this is a an Excel uh, high performance cold racing plug. It, you can see that there's not much depth to it. Um, just looking at it, um, you can see it's a very cold high performance resistorless plug. There's no resistor in this plug. And this plug is the NGK B7HS10. It's a standard resistor plug. It runs pretty warm. It's uh, made for like a lawnmower or you know a small cycle, uh, four cycle engine. But the, you have to remove the electrode in order to get the round firing. Otherwise, it just shorts out to the electrode, and you don't get much burn. And I've done that on this plug as well. And here's basically the small engine I'm using. Um, this is a 6.5 horse engine. And this is a this is a, a duplicate of the original Excella plug. Just take this out so I can show you. Now see this has the electrode on it. I haven't changed it. I haven't taken it off. And then of course when you come here, you can see there's no 
electrode on the bottom is perfectly round. This needs to be filled with ceramic to avoid a corona effect inside the plug. Uh, corona causes the plug to short. So we're gonna when it gets wet, we're gonna take that and fill that with ceramic uh, so it won't be a problem. Just put this back in here. I don't have anything following my cylinder head. Everything else here is kind of just parts in the way. But like I said, this is the plug. I'm going to go ahead and hit it again. That's running pretty, pretty wide. Now by itself, this circuit won't do anything because there's uh, not enough amperage to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the plug around. Drive it again. There's not enough amperage here to actually do anything with the water, and um, that's what this MMC is for. This is a high frequency MMC. I'm basically looking for about 55 to maybe 50 to 55 hertz. These, however, take um, much longer to charge. Even though they do the job, um, they'll take a finger off. You don't want to use them. They don't charge fast enough um, to run an engine. You might get one or two RPMs out of it. This, however, uh, in theory, should let the engine run about 3,000 RPMs, no problem. Um, 3,500 RPMs. Uh, uh, 50, 50 hertz is about 5,000 RPMs, so it should be able to handle that. But that's an experiment. Basically what's going to happen with this circuit is this MMC is going to be piggybacked off of that into here. Uh, this is going to be blocked from these so the high voltage will not come back down into my MMC. MMC will then be connected up to a timer. It will discharge through and into that adding DC amperage and voltage to a circuit. Okay. So this is charged with between 12 to 50 volts. Right now I'm working with 12, so that's all I got. I don't have any fancy power supplies or anything. I might go to 24 volts with two batteries, but um, that's undetermined yet. <coughs> now, um, these are very cheap. You can get them in an electronic surplus store, 25 cents each. Okay, these coils were about 30 bucks. These plugs were $3.50 at the speed shop. The motor here, this is a 129 at Harbor Freight. I've got it disassembled because I was working on the timing, but this timing is going to go away. Uh, this is the old magneto. It's already I've already advanced it for 30 degrees. Uh, it used to be mounted here, now it's mounted here. Um, this is going to be replaced with a Mallory 6100M uh, infrared uh, breaker switch. It's going to go in here and be timed off this. this these two pulleys are used to drive the alternators. There's going to be one here and one over here. So, but there's more coming on that later. Anyway, here's the circuit, and that's pretty much it. And I'll, I'll try to get another video once I get the capacitors hooked up. Talk to you then.